Hey everyone, hope you're having an awesome time here at Cascadia JS. My name is Rahat, and you're tuned into my talk, Building Better Communities with Mental Health Support. So first of all, who am I? Like I said, my name is Rahat. So I'm a software developer, podcast host, speaker, mental health advocate. I'm also recently a founder of a mental health startup. If you ever want to talk to me about any of those things, you can find me on Twitter at Rahat Codes, or also at TechForHumans.io, which is the handle for my podcast. So we're just going to get started. And I'm going to throw out this huge number, 200 million. What does that mean? We're going to get back to that in just a second. So in my introduction, I didn't mention a couple things. So those couple things were, um, you know, in addition to everything else that I do, I also suffered through major depression disorder and anxiety. I take medication for um, treating these illnesses, and I also see a therapist a couple times a month. So why am I sharing this? Why does this have anything to do with this 200 million? Well, 200 million is the number of work days that the CDC estimates we lose annually due to depression and other types of mental illness. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of days. And the first time I saw this, I realized, okay, maybe that means I'm not alone. You know, maybe that means there's other people who go through similar things. And... If nothing else, that's what I really hope that you take away from this if you are someone who goes through um, depression or any other type of mental illness. It's just the fact that, you know, you're not alone. Um, we're usually not suffering alone. We're usually just suffering in silence. Now, if you're someone who wants to help out or someone who, you know, wants to get more involved in the open source mental illness community, there's an awesome nonprofit called Open Source Mental Illness, or OSMI for short. They're a nonprofit dedicated to raising awareness, educating, and providing resources to support mental wellness in the tech and open source communities. They've got a bunch of devs just like me who go to other conferences like this and talk about mental health and tech, and it's something we definitely need to talk about some more. they got three really awesome resources. Um, first, first is a book. They're all, all three of them are books. And um, the first one is all about, you know, um, affecting mental health policies in the workplace, things that you can do at work. The second resource is for specifically for executives and HR professionals. You know, if you're interested in helping out your employees in terms of, you know, supporting them in their mental health, this is for you. This is an awesome thing to read. The last one is specifically for employees. Um, and it kind of takes you, it does, it does a great job actually of taking you through um, the Americans with Disabilities Act and going over a lot of the rights that you have in the workforce. Um, all these resources are technically available for free, but definitely throw them a few dollars. It's uh, available for like a pay what you want on their lean pub. If you're using these resources, please support them. They're an awesome um, organization. So for today's topics, we're going to be focusing on two things, boot camps and tech events. So I'm a boot camp grad myself and um, Overall, I've had a pretty good experience, but the main issue that I have with boot camps is this sort of romanticization of burnout culture. And, you know, you definitely need to make sure you're putting in a lot of work um, when you're transitioning to tech. But often, the, one of the very first things the boot camp tells you is that you need to put in X amount of hours aside from your classwork, your project work, or whatever work you're doing. And um, you need to be doing that in order to be successful and, you know, find your first tech job or whatever it is. And like I said, yeah, there's definitely a lot of work that goes into it, but we're definitely also not doing enough to make sure we're preventing burnout. I usually look at burnout in three ways. It starts off with this th first thought. I need to put in extra work every day to get better. Now this alone is not too bad. You know, you have to be pretty consistent if you're trying to break into tech, that's true. However, with this being one of the first things that a bootcamp kind of shows you and tries to get you to make sure you're doing all these extra hours of work, it can get a little overwhelming. You may eventually think, okay, I may have taken on more than I can handle. You know, I'm doing my classwork. I'm doing an extra side project. I'm, you know, wanting to contribute to open source or whatever it is. And all of these things are just piling one after another. 
you know, you're thinking, yeah, I'm doing all this to get better at coding or in tech or whatever I want to do. But it's just, at some point, it might just be too much. And you might say, you know, I can't figure out any of this, you know. I just want to forget about it. I just want to give up. And if you're not taking those breaks, if you're not thinking, okay, look, I need to step back and think about what I'm doing and just take a second to breathe, you know, a lot of it might not sink in. So you might just be doing work for no reason because you're not retaining any of it. And then you're just burned out. You're just, you just can't function after that for quite a while and it really sucks and it's some it's a place I've been a few times now you might be thinking to yourself okay we're hot I went to a boot camp too and um, I didn't experience all this stuff I didn't really experience burnout I felt pretty good felt like it you know helped me a lot and that's great that's awesome um, I also had a pretty good you know boot camp experience but not everyone else has See, the problem is a lot of the times when we think about our success with these boot camps, we fall into this whole brand loyalty thing. And the important thing to really remember is that, you know, your amazing boot camp experience doesn't invalidate someone else's bad experience and vice versa, too. And honestly, if, you know, if we're kind of exercising brand loyalty, then we should really be challenging our boot camps to do the same things for others that they've done for us, you know. If your boot camp is not, you know, prioritizing people's mental health and supporting it in some way, then it's probably going to need to do some go through some type of improvement. Now, one of the things I touched on a little bit throughout all of that is this concept of hustle culture. You know, after your boot camp, doing some more side projects or, you know, building up your knowledge, things like that. And this really extends into beyond even boot camp even like when you go into your career you're almost constantly told okay yeah you know you gotta have passion for what you're doing you know you're, you'll only be really successful if you exercise your passion in tech but the thing we really need to remember is that having a passion for tech is not a requirement to be great at tech you know we can go to work code for eight hours a day come home and spend time with family or watch some netflix and that's totally fine we don't need to code all day every day it's you know if if you want to have a side hustle you want to go do that that is awesome but it's not a requirement and unfortunately we have a lot of gatekeeping tendencies right now in our tech community saying that you know you have to do this and it's absolutely not true it's just this is the type of thing that's really you know adding to that burnout culture that i was talking about and we really need to change this in our communities. The other thing that's really promoted a lot on things like Twitter and LinkedIn are tech events like this one. And overall, to, uh, I've, I, I love tech events. I love going to them um, when we could go to them. And, um, you know, they're great for networking. I found my first job at a tech event. It was great. But the thing is, sometimes we're kind of focusing too much on one type of event. What do I mean by that? So maybe you've got an event and uh, maybe you're kind of advertising that there's, you know, a ton of booze there. We can all, you know, have a party while you're listening to some, you know, talk on JavaScript or whatever it is. And um, the thing is, when we're focusing too much on something like alcohol, we're automatically excluding a lot of people. There could be people who don't drink due to their faith. Some people who don't drink due to past experience, whatever it might be. And um, when we're focusing so much on it, we're kind of sending the message to, the, to these groups of people that, you know, they're definitely probably not going to feel comfortable. And I'm not saying you should get rid of your, you know, booze completely, but just make sure it's not the only thing that's available to drink and maybe don't put, too much, so put so much of a focus on it. The other thing is the type of events that we're kind of forced to have now, I guess, are these virtual ones because of the pandemic. And I'm kind of hoping those don't go away completely. And I have to give a shout out really to um, React Adelphia. They're an awesome meetup that has been doing kind of a hybrid of both in-person and online meetup since before even the pandemic started. Um, they were having their in-person meetups and they were also, you know, kind of streaming it on Twitch, 
had um, you know chat rooms on Discord and communities for people to network on through there. And you know, if you're someone like me who goes through social anxiety, having these other options to network are amazing. And providing as many opportunities as possible for different types of people to network is one of the most important things of really any tech events. Now, going back to the whole, you know, maybe someday we'll be meeting in person again. Um, I'd like to give you give you all another way to really help others, you know, feel included. Um, that's the Pac-Man rule, and it's created by um, Eric Holscher. It's a really awesome rule that you can use at you know in-person meetups and tech events. Um, think about it this way, you know, in between different talks in the hallway, maybe there's a group of people talking about you know, whatever it is they just learned at the talk. And um, maybe they're standing in a circle. Someone passing by might be like, oh, they're talking about something pretty cool. Um, I wish I could kind of talk to them, but yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can interrupt or anything. But let's reverse that and let's say, go back and let's say they're not in a circle. Now they're in like an open circle, kind of like a Pac-Man. You know, there's a space for someone to come into. Now that person comes by and is like, Hmm, there, there's an empty space, maybe I can join in the conversation. Sometimes people just need to see that there is a space for them. And you'll see that, you know, they're more comfortable in that way to actually join in. And as you're adding people, just definitely make sure you're not closing the circle. Keep it wide open. So these are all just, you know, some ways that we can improve our um overall community and the support that you know the community can give to mental health and like i said earlier in this talk the biggest thing that i hope you can take away from this if you do go through depression or any other type of mental illness is that again we don't suffer alone we suffer in silence we don't talk about it enough i'm hoping to change that a little bit by doing this talk and there's definitely ways we can improve our communities we can make sure people feel more included, feel more comfortable. And as we do that, I think we can definitely build up a better community around tech. Hey everyone, hope you're having an awesome time here. Rahat, yay! Thank you so much for that talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I really, really appreciated how vulnerable you were and how honest you were about this because it's it's so important to hear in tech, even if it's just a reminder to to Definitely. have that in our heads to know that our lives aren't our jobs. Yeah. <laughs> it took me some time um, to figure that out myself too. Same. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> really it's really good to hear that. And I know a lot of people were loving hearing you emphasize that and, and be validated in that way. Yeah. Definitely. So um for for people who aren't sure how to approach this because we're always being recommended to do side projects and to put our names out there, set up a personal brand, be involved in open source, be involved with our coworkers, be involved with our family. Da, da, da. How do you recommend avoiding burnout while still being able to do enough things that you can feel at least employable? Um, I would say like really the biggest thing is to take breaks and maybe have something else that like you can use to unwind a little bit. Like for me, it's usually just been hip hop. I've been like listening to music or writing music and it helps me to like get away from all of it just for a little bit. Um, so just like having something else that has nothing to do with code just lets you unwind and um, not worry about anything is usually something that I find is really good. Um, and really just instead of like structuring your day to be like three to five hours of coding, maybe do a little less like, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes consistently rather than several hours might be a little bit easier. Yeah, I heard a manager say once that they were very happy if they could get half a solid day of work from each of their mm -hmm. employees. If they if they got half a day, then they were happy because that meant that they got a good amount of content. Expecting more than that and then expecting overtime and all kinds of things, that just ends up leading to a really unhealthy, stressed out team. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I myself like to relax with Fortnite and it is great to be able to just <laughs> like smash on buttons and chat with friends yeah. and everything to just get away from the code sometimes. <laughs> um, so sp speaking of jobs and, and taking care of employees and stuff, uh, do you have any recommendations for what employers can do and hiring managers can do uh, to invest in their uh, employees and, and people's mental health? 
Yeah, definitely. There's um, so I'd mentioned like open source mental illness, the uh, nonprofit during um, the talk. Uh, they have like really, really good resources on exactly that. Um, there's a book specifically for like um, employers and HR professionals. So um, it kind of like lists out all the things you can do to support your employees a lot better uh, in terms of mental health. And um, honestly, for me, it's like uh, the places that I felt a little bit more comfortable discussing my mental health has been places that call out um, like certain, I guess, uh, benefits they have specifically regarding mental health, um, like, mm. you know, certain amount of free days of counseling, um, just or like having some some type of like event where someone can talk to um, other people, whatever it is, and um, just like recognizing that mental illness and physical Ill and physical illnesses are not that different. Uh, they still need to be treated. Right. Totally. Well, thank you so much for that. It looks like some people have been sharing some really great uh, links and resources <laughs> based on that as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, I really appreciate your, your speaking about this subject. It was so useful and, and uh, again, just great to hear. Definitely. Thank you. All right. And with that, I think we are going to Jessica to talk a bit more about lunchtime. <laughs>